Hello and welcome everyone to the Brooklyn Technical High School Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You may use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you today. This is one of many different sessions happening. We've got a few more yet this evening and then two more days of fun. So make sure you sign up for additional sessions. And this presentation along with all of the others are being recorded. And within about a week, you can access all those recordings at strivescan.com forward slash Brooklyn Tech. Okay, I'll put that link in the chat for you as well. But now on to our main event. We have a wonderful group of institutions and kicking it all off today is Clark University. Whenever you're ready, Clark. Great, thank you. Um, so you should see the challenge convention change our world, uh, which is Clark's motto. Um, just to get started, hi everybody. My name is Chris Munoz Colleen. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions for Access and Inclusion here at Clark. Um, we are located in Worcester, Massachusetts, about three and a half hours away from New York City. Um, Clark is a small research undergraduate uh, liberal arts institution. So we're around 2,200 undergraduate students and around 800 grad students. Uh, the foundation of Clark is really interesting. We actually started off as a um, purely psychology uh, graduate institution. Uh, so if you come to campus, you will see a statue of Sigmund Freud. Um, that's because in uh, the beginning of Clark's uh, history, we were just a psychology graduate institution and Sigmund Freud uh, gave a lecture here. This was the only American university that he gave a lecture at, uh, which is quite exciting. Um, but Clark has expanded beyond uh, just being a psychology graduate institute. Um, so our approach to learning is called LEAP or liberal education and effective practice. Um, what that means is that we have a liberal arts curriculum, but we also are really focused on moving from theory to practice, like almost as if learning is a sport. Um, you wouldn't just want to watch people play baseball uh, and talk about people playing baseball. You would actually want to play baseball yourself as a mode of learning. Um, so that's what effective practice is referring to. Um, here's how we kind of move people from the classroom into the world. Um, it starts off with the first year intensive, which is a course that every incoming Clark student takes. Um, you can see there's a range of subject matters that you can pick from. Really the main point of the FYI is that you get acquainted with college level work um and you find your community at clark so your professor is actually your first academic advisor so you kind of have a cohort <laughs> everyone's on the same page starting out in their time at clark um, and they really do range from, uh, in terms of subject matter so you can pick whatever you're interested in if you don't know what you want to major in yet it's a great chance to explore something new um, but this is a course where you're really going to learn kind of the foundations of being a college student as I said earlier, we are a liberal arts institution, so we do ask that you take classes across the disciplines. Um, there's a couple of reasons for this. Really, we want you to leave Clark being able to give a TED talk if you need to, uh, whatever your subject matter is. So think of it like the program of liberal studies is kind of the broad exploration, right? So your major is gonna be the deep dive, um, but the PLS is really giving you a broad exploration alongside that deep dive. Uh, you do have a lot of freedom, though, in terms of what you study in the PLS. So if you take the aesthetic perspective, that's kind of our arts requirement, um, you'll notice that you could do what the students in the slide are doing, which is photography. That's Steve Dorado, our photography professor draped under the camera. Um, that's a course where you're actually making art. If you wanted to say, mm, you know, maybe I don't want to make art, <laughs> maybe I would rather study art, you could do the history of jazz, for example, completely different discipline, you will not be uh, making any art in the history of jazz, right, but both of them kind of bring you into a new direction. So that's the hope behind the PLS. Um, as I mentioned, Clark is really focused on moving you out of the classroom. <laughs> um, so one way that we do this is pop courses, problems of practice courses. Um, so you'll see some examples on here, but really it can be in any discipline, uh, ranging from partnering with businesses and schools, translating for refugees in Worcester, 
um, curating an exhibit in an art museum. Like it really is all about moving from, if we take the baseball example, from watching uh, and theorizing about to actually enacting and practicing. Um, like I said, we want you to leave Clark being able to give a TED talk if you need to, but also to talk about experiences that you've already had and already made. Um, the kind of cherry on top of all of this is the LEAP capstone, which is the culminating academic experience. Um, you'll see from the slide that it's a pretty broad range of experiences that we're talking about. Um, think of it as a larger project that is really uh, your undertaking and that you're working with a professor on closely. Uh, could be a thesis, could be an internship that you later write a reflection on, uh, but it's really a culminating project. I'm just going to wrap up with some information about life after Clark. Um, these statistics really just show that our students do well. 97% uh, are employed within six months after graduation or they're pursuing graduate work or voluntary service. A third of our students actually stay at Clark for one more year and they get a tuition free master's degree. If you remember nothing else, I think this is the thing to remember um, that a third of our Clarkies will stay on for one more year and get that master's degree at no tuition cost. Um, the main uh, point that I wanna emphasize here is that just feel free to keep in touch with me. I am the counselor for students from New York City. Um, I didn't even know what an admissions counselor was when I was applying to college. You will never bother me if you email me to reach out with questions. Um, so just stay in touch along the way. And I hope to hear from all of you soon. Um, with that, I will hand the uh, virtual microphone over to my colleague. Thank you all. Fantastic. What a wonderful way to get us started with this session. Thank you, Clark University. Okay, we are going to turn it over now to St. John's University, whenever you're ready. Sorry about that technical difficulty. Let me try again. <laughs> okay, so you guys should be able to see my share screen here. Um, thank you all for um, joining this evening. My name is Lisa Say. I'm with the Office of Admissions at St. John's University. Um, being from Brooklyn Tech, you might you have all, if you know, most if not all of you are familiar with St. John. Some of you might live in our backyard in Queens. Um, so we are located in Queens, not too far away from tech, um, but we do have a traditional campus. So even though we are within the New York City limits, we have that traditional campus feel, which you could see depicted here on the screen. We have um, a campus situated on over 100 acres in a really residential neighborhood. Our campus used to actually be an old golf course. So we like to say it's really the best of both worlds where you get that feel of being on a college campus community, but yet the city is really right in your backyard. We have free shuttles for our students, which go to the nearest subway, which is about a 10 minute walk, um, shuttles that go to other areas of the neighborhood as well. So super easy to get around and navigate um, other parts of the city while, while still being on that traditional campus. We have about 12,000 total undergraduate students. So we are a large university, but on average, there's only going to be about 28 students in a class. So so you'll never be in a huge lecture hall class with 400 students. You're always going to be taught by a professor. Um, so it's a really nice balance of the two where you're walking around the physical campus feeling like you attend a large university, but your classes are small, so you feel like you go to a small school. So it's a good mix of the two. Now, we do have more than one campus in the metropolitan area, Queens being our main campus. Um, we have a second campus in Staten Island, a third campus in Manhattan. Um, the Manhattan campus is very specialized for only two business programs in the insurance industry, actuarial science and risk management. Our Staten Island campus is for students who really are more so looking for a smaller atmosphere where they're gonna have an opportunity to still get that St. John's experience, but only go to a college, of a campus of about 2000 students. Um, so a bit of a different feel. Staten Island offers all the same majors as Queens with the exception 
perception of science majors. And then we do have a number of campus, uh, campuses abroad um, in Rome, in Paris, um, our own St. John's campuses. And then we have a site in Limerick, Ireland. About 40% of our students do take part in study abroad. So it's definitely something that's very popular amongst our student body and open to students in any major. So definitely something that's strongly encouraged. Um, we're split up into five colleges and we have over 100 undergrad programs. So a really wide array of majors to choose from. Undecided is actually our most popular major for new incoming students. So it's not uncommon that students come to St. John's and don't know what they want to study or come in um, with a few different areas in mind. Um, it's not uncommon and it's very easy to change majors or declare minors, combine multiple interests that you might have. All of those things are possibilities. We do also have a number of dual degree options or multiple degree um, paths, which allow you to get a bachelor's and a master's, a bachelor's and an MBA. We even have a joint program with our own law school on campus that allows students to get a bachelor's and a JD in six instead of seven years. So those are all very popular options. Um, we have close to 50 dual degree options for students. And it's not something that you need to know coming in as a freshman through the application process, but something you could decide um, by the end of sophomore year if you wish to pursue that and if it's available in your major. Um, in terms of, oh, sorry, there we go. In terms of activity, getting involved. So we do have that traditional campus feel. Again, we have almost 200 different clubs and organizations. So really something for everyone, athletics, Greek life, academic clubs, community service, um, student government, um, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, if there's not something that we offer that you wanted to get more involved in, you can start your own club. We are division one in athletics. So sports are really big at St. John's. Our men's basketball team plays most of their home games at Madison Square Garden. So as a student, it's super fun to get involved in that atmosphere go to the garden for the games and show your school spirit. So definitely a big part of, of the student life experience at St. John's. Um, internships and job placement, about 94% of our graduates are either in a full-time job or graduate school within six months of graduation. Um, this is kind of a brief overview of some of our larger internship sites. Um, most of our students will do at least one internship, um, really depending kind of on their schedule, interest, all those kinds of things. But an internship is gonna be a huge part of your experience. And we like to say, regardless of what field you're looking to pursue or what area you're looking to go into, New York it ha is the hub for pretty much everything. Um, so there are lots of opportunities right in our backyard um, through working with our career center and through our large alumni base um, to allow students to get those hands-on experiences. Um, lastly, before I wrap it up and pass it over to my colleague, um, that is my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me if you do have any questions. I'm happy to help answer those for you. Um, I am really familiar with tech. I've been working with, um, with Brooklyn Tech for a, a quite a few years now. Um, we are also doing um, visits on campus. Um, if you wanted to come for a visit, you wanted to check St. John's out, feel free to sign up for an in-person tour or a virtual tour, and that link I provided right at the bottom. Um, so enjoy the rest of the evening, and we look forward to answering more questions. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you very much, St. John's University. That was wonderful. I want to remind everyone that that Q&A function is open, so make sure that you get our, your questions in to any and all of our presenters at any time during the event. Okay, we are going to turn it over now to the Savannah College of Art and Design. Take it away. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Peterson. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission here at the Savannah College of Art and Design, uh, better known as SCAD. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see what I've done here. Uh, what I did was I pulled up our website, scad.edu, because it has a ton of information uh, for you uh, if you're looking at SCAD into our programs or campuses, um, as well as how you can get here. So uh, first and foremost, what you should know about us is that we are the largest art and design school in the entire country. Uh, we are primarily based in Savannah, Georgia, uh, which is an absolutely gorgeous location. Uh, we also have a campus in Atlanta, Georgia as well. And we have more majors and minors than any other art and design school in the entire country. For instance, we've got 45 majors and 75 minors. So that's a lot of different things uh, that you can certainly get your hands on while you're a student at SCAD. As I mentioned before, we are primarily located in Savannah, Georgia, which is an absolutely gorgeous location uh, to study in. Uh, the entire city is a National Historic Landmark District, and down there we've got more than 80 buildings for our students. So students that are interested in things like animation or fashion or film or game design, uh, they actually have entire buildings to call their own down there and 
better yet, they have 24 hour access to these facilities um, as well. Um, also, what you should know about Savannah, Georgia, it's extremely warm down there. Average temperature is about 75 degrees, about three hours from Orlando, Florida. So that kind of gives you an idea uh, for what the climate is like down there. Um, in addition to Savannah, as I mentioned before, we are also in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Atlanta right now is going through a major boom in enterprise, uh, entertainment, culture. Uh, it's really incredible to see how many companies are really flocking to Atlanta. And really what that means for our students is some great job opportunities after they graduate. A lot of our students do get opportunities within that greater Atlanta area. In fact, some of our top recruiters um, from that city um, have been companies such as Delta Airlines, Coca-Cola, and then right across the street from us is the headquarters of Cartoon Network. So for students that want to go into animation, uh, they've got a major studio right across the street that's recruiting a lot of our students um, at the same time, which has been amazing to see. The important thing to note is that when you are accepted to SCAD, you are accepted to both of these campuses at the same time time, which means you can just bounce back and forth from campus to campus, semester by semester. So you could start uh, uh, your location in, uh, in Savannah and then do some of your second year uh, in Atlanta. And like I said, you can make that switch uh, as much as you possibly like. Uh, when it comes to our programs, We've got, like I said before, we've got 45 majors, 75 minors. They're all listed here. So you can get a ton of information uh, about these programs. You can see every single class that you take within the major. Uh, but my favorite part is that you can actually see what careers uh, come out of these majors as well. So if you're interested in things like animation, if you're not exactly sure what you, what you can do with something like that, we're gonna show you that on our website. Uh, and of course, uh, we're also gonna show you some student work as well. So I'm not gonna spoil it for you because I want you to go to our website and check it out, but you can definitely see some examples of student work and what's being done uh, in a lot of these programs. Real quick, when we talk about the admissions process, uh, we are a rolling admissions program, which means you can apply at any time during your junior or senior year. Um, and then once we receive your transcripts, uh, we can go ahead and move forward on your application. For this year's senior class and next year's ju this current junior class, uh, we are a test optional school. So you absolutely do not have to give us uh, an SAT or ACT score if you don't want to, uh, but uh, you can absolutely do so. And that will certainly help towards um, academic scholarships. And we do also offer a portfolio-based scholarship as well. So you, we stack those two scholarships uh, together for you. We have students from all 50 states, over hundred different countries. So you're coming into a really nice uh, diverse population in both those aspects. You can absolutely double major here. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have 45 majors, 75 minors. So majoring and minoring uh, is absolutely possible um, on that end as well. What I'm gonna do for you as soon as I'm done talking is I'm gonna go ahead in the chat uh, and put my contact information in there. Um, I handle all students that come from the greater New York City area. So I represent all five boroughs as well as Long Island and Westchester. Been to Brooklyn Tech a number of times. It's one of my favorite schools to come visit uh, when I'm in the area. And obviously knock on wood, fingers crossed uh, that I'll be able to do that again uh, this coming fall and, and so on. But um, I would definitely, typically I'm in the city uh, about two to three days uh, a week. Um, so feel free to, to email me and we can connect in person or on Zoom. Uh, more than happy to do that for you uh, at any time. So thank you very much. Fantastic. Wonderful. It was great to hear from the Savannah College of Art and Design. We are going to turn it over now to the School of Visual Arts whenever you're ready. Awesome, thanks. Let me play this. Uh, so hi everyone. My name is Katie McCaffrey. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at the School of Visual Arts. And I'm also joined today by my colleague, John Chun, who will be in the Q&A and in the chat. So if you have any questions during the presentation, definitely feel free to drop those in there. And if you want our contact information, you can also feel free to screenshot this slide. Uh, but just jumping right in with a little bit of basic information about SVA. We are an art college located in Manhattan, and we were founded in 1947 as a cartoonist and illustrator school. But current day, we have grown a little bit. So we currently have 3,600 undergraduate students across 11 different Bachelor of Fine Arts degree programs. We have over 930 faculty members who are all working professionals in their field, and that is a requirement to be a teacher here at SVA. They teach over 1,700 courses, so that's way more classes than you could ever take in four years. So there's definitely a lot of selection. And when you graduate, you can join a group of over 38,000 global alumni that span across 65 different countries. And this is an overview of what our campus looks like, and we'll zoom in a little bit further. Like I said, we are located in Manhattan, and we are mainly on 23rd Street and 21st Street between 1st and 8th Avenue. And all of those red squares over there on the map are all the different facilities that we have here on campus. And most of our buildings are dedicated to our studio facilities. So all of our hardware and software on campus is updated every 18 months. So you're always using the most current version of any sort of program or computer or 
anything like that, any sort of device that you might have. We also have a lot of different facilities such as a bio art lab, we have drawing and painting studios, a printmaking facility, a fiber arts lab, filming studios, black and white dark room, kind of anything that you could think of. So definitely if there's any specific uh, facilities that you're thinking of, again, feel free to drop them in the Q&A function. Um, but these are our 11 different Bachelor of Fine Arts degree programs that we offer. And a couple things to note here at SVA, um, when you graduate from SVA, you receive a BFA degree. And within a BFA degree, uh, over four years, you're doing two thirds of your classes in studio and then one third in humanities, sciences and art history. So you are mainly focusing on those studio courses in the department that you've selected. So we don't allow students to come in undecided. And that is because most of our departments have very specific curriculum from the first year. Um, so if you're interested in something such as like film or photography and video, you're doing camera related work from that first year, computer art or animation, you're learning those animation fundamentals. Um, but we do offer four departments that share a foundation year. If you're kind of undecided between the four of these, you do still have to pick one of them. Um, but that is cartooning, design, fine arts and illustration. And it's a little bit easier to switch between those four going into your second year. Uh, and then, like I mentioned, we also do, uh, we have all of our faculty and alumni that we can connect you with when you're a student here. Uh, like I mentioned, all of our faculty members are working professionals in their field. So for the different departments that can mean a lot of different things, and this is also a very small selection of them listed up here on the top of this slide. Um, an example of one, Carol Bentel, who is our interior design uh, department chair, she runs her own interior design firm. So you definitely get a lot of connections within the interior design department um, for students that are interested in photography and video or film, you might have teachers that are working as full-time photographers, maybe they're working as directors for different um, filming production companies or things like that. Um, but you can see all of our faculty members listed on our website if you're interested in getting a larger list. And then we also do have over 38,000 global alumni and they span across 65 different countries. So there's definitely a lot of SVA connections in a lot of different industries, in a lot of different cities and in a lot of different countries. I um, mean, again, you can see more of these listed on our website. This is a very small selection. And then we also do have a career development office and they can help connect you with companies such as the ones listed up here, as well as smaller companies located in New York. And they do host internship and career fairs every single year so that students can show their work and make those connections and have those connections when they're graduating and leaving school. Uh, and then just to briefly go over our different application requirements, um, we have six different steps that you need to complete, the first of which being the application, which is located on our website. We're not part of the Common App. We also do require an application fee, but can accept various fee waivers. So definitely feel free to ask about that. A uh, 500 word statement of intent, uh, which is a pretty casual essay that you have to submit, any official transcripts from any colleges or high schools you've attended. For this upcoming fall semester, we are SAT ACT optional, um, and we have not made any decisions for the upcoming year, but you can keep up to date on our website. And if English is not your first language, we do require an English proficiency exam score. And then since we are an art school, we also do require a portfolio, but we have a couple different requirements depending on which department you're interested in. So you can find more information about that uh, on our website as well, or we can answer a question in the Q&A. And then just a couple dates to keep in mind. Uh, December 1st is our early action deadline. These are the same dates every single year. So whether you're a junior right now or a senior, whatever it may be. Um, early action is our December 1st deadline. So that is a non-binding decision. You just get your decision earlier. If you're interested in being considered for a scholarship, you just have to apply by February 1st and you'll be automatically considered as long as you have a 3.0 GPA. Um, and then February or March 1st is our scholarship consideration deadline for any transfer students. And that is about it from me. Um, if you're interested in keeping in contact with us, you can find our counselor contact information at sva.edu slash counselors, or you can email our general admissions email at admissions at sva.edu. All right, wonderful. Well, I just want to put another plug for that q and I do see some questions coming in, so that's fantastic. Make sure you take advantage of having all of these representatives in one place. But now we are going to turn it over to Juniata College whenever you are ready. Excellent, okay. Um, hello everyone, um, my name is Kat Swantak. I'm, I'm an assistant dean of admission here at Juniata College. Uh, super stoked to be here to, to tell you a little bit about who we are as an institution. So let's let's dive right in. I think a great place to start is of course, just the basics. Uh, we have almost 1600 students um, on our campus. We are fully residential and we have been all this year, which is, which is really cool. Um, we have students from 39 different countries and 37 states. And those 39 countries represent every single continent except Antarctica, because that would be kind of strange, but also really cool. 30% um, of our student population is either, in, they're either international or what we classify as Milana. 
And Milana stands for multicultural, African-American, Native American, Asian American, <clears throat> Latin X, or Alaska Pacific Islander. And I totally mixed up the L and the N, so forgive me for that. Um, we also have a 13 to one student faculty ratio. So like a lot of us, you know, liberal arts colleges out there, we very much value the, the faculty student relationship. And I'll dive into that a little bit more later. The average class size is 19. Um, also on our campus, we don't have Greek life. And we have over, I think we're at 119 clubs right now, which is insane. Um, so our students are very active. Uh, one thing I do feel keen to mention is this book called The Colleges That Change Lives. Shout out to Clark, that are, is also in this session. They are one of the colleges that change lives also. So long story short, about you know a couple decades ago, there was this really smart dude named Lauren Pope. He used to be a New York Times editor. Um, even back then, parents were saying, Lauren, Lauren, you know, help me make a college list for my student. They want that uh, individualized attention. They want that quality education. Give me a list of these schools. And then Lauren Pope says, no, I'm going to write a book instead. So he spent two years traveling from the West Coast to the East Coast, finding those small liberal arts colleges that are student centered. And we're very proud to say that we've been in the book since its very first edition. Um, so I know that we all, even us presenters, there's information overload today. There's a lot to digest. So if you forget everything that I say, I hope it's not these two things. Um, we have two aspects about who we are as an identity at Juniata College that make us distinct from our peers. So the first one is we don't have majors and I'll explain why. We have something called a program of emphasis instead. So let me explain that. Um, let's say you go to college and you say, oh, I want to major in biology. Typically what will happen is, all right, you go to your you know, faculty, let's say here's your 40 things that you have to do. You take them in this order, pick from these electives, bing, bang, boom, you're all set, four years, you have your degree. And I know I'm exaggerating a little bit, but for the sake of story, and that's great because structure is important. And so when we tackle education, we spin that a little bit. A POE, think of it as, okay, you go to college, I wanna major in bio. The first thing we're gonna do is say, ask you why. Do you wanna go into the health professions? Do you wanna do neurobiological research or whatever? Because a POE really is like, hey, here's your 20 things you have to do and the rest is blank like a scaffolding, right? And so how do you fill in those blanks? Why do you have those blanks? You have them so you can tailor your major towards your interests and towards your passions. So the second thing is every student at Juniata has two advisors, not one. We're all smart. We know we get to college. We have an advisor to help pick our classes and stuff. But at Juniata, you have two to walk you through your academic journey. Um, of course, we're all about hands-on learning. About 96% of our students have had at least one internship, hands-on research opportunity or study abroad experience by the time they're seniors. We also have, of course, study abroad on every single continent except Antarctica. Uh, and about 50% of our students take advantage of that. Um, I'll just really quick go over some of the stuff at the end. We try to de-stress the college search as much as a college application process as much as possible. We are on the coalition and common application. Three great things. We have a free app if there's no fee to apply. We are test optional, so you are not required to submit your standardized test scores. And I'm super proud to say we've been test optional for over 20 years now, which is pretty cool. And also we don't have a supplement. So there are no um, additional essays or portfolios that you have to submit. But if you do, that's also awesome. We have four deadlines to keep in mind. Our early decision deadline is November 15th, the binding one. Then we have two rounds of early action. The first is December 1st. The second is January 15th. And then of course, our regular decision deadline is March 15th. Um, also, we do not use the CSS profile. We use um, the FAFSA. Um, when you apply to Juniata, you're automatically being considered for merit scholarships, so there are no extra forms or paperwork that you need to fill out when it comes to merit scholarships. Um, and of course, we, like the last slide said, we suggest that you get your FAFSA in sooner rather than later, because once we have a student that's admitted, we hit the gas on crafting their formal financial aid award 
which is great for you because this is a really big decision, right? So you have more time to, to make that college selection, especially considering it's a huge, you know, financial decision. And so I know, you know, that was a lot, but um, like my peers have said, um, I am the city's uh, admission counselor, so I would read your application, I would be your point person every step of the way. So this is my contact information if you'd like to reach out afterwards, and um, thank you all so much. Awesome, thank you so much Juniata College. Okay, we are going to wrap up this portion of the event by hearing from Bowdoin College. Whenever you are ready, go ahead. All right, sorry about that. Um, we're ready to party. My name is Justin Fahey. I'm an Associate Dean of Admissions here at Bowdoin College. And uh, just a quick uh, quick note for those who are hearing the, the word Bowdoin for the very first time. Bowdoin rhymes with exploding. We've all had to learn Bowdoin, exploding, done and done. Um, Bowdoin College is a residential college on the coast of Maine. Uh, we're a small liberal arts college on the coast of Maine, and this is a shot of our uh, our quad. Um, we I share the shot uh, just just as a, a way of emphasizing the fact that we are in an eminent an eminently uh, walkable campus, so very pedestrian friendly. Uh, students walk to and from academic buildings, their dorms, um, the the dining hall, uh, sports facilities, athletic facilities. Uh, they walk to and from, and they also uh, will bike as well. And before I jump too much into a, a discussion about the college itself, I think it's really important to, um, to talk about the connection between the college, Bowdoin, and the state of Maine. Um, uh, for those of you who remember third grade, uh, this is likely a reminder of the lovely Venn diagram. Uh, and, and I think it's really important to, to, to draw, draw a connection to the fact that um, Mainers and for that matter, students and faculty and staff at Bowdoin are, um, are independent and welcoming and straightforward. And we will welcome you with, uh, with open arms and, and offer um, lobsters and, and blueberry pie once you arrive. A uh, quick geographic, uh, geography lesson, main top right hand corner of your map. Um, this is a shot of the town of Brunswick. So we are located in the small town of Brunswick and about 20,000 folks. So uh, really small when compared to New York City for sure. But I like to say it is cute as a button. It has over 60 shops and, um, and restaurants. Uh, there is there's plenty to do in terms of uh, in terms of our students being able to to get to and from um, restaurants and the Amtrak station and bus station and uh, and theaters. Um, again, the campus is about a five minute walk from uh, from the core of downtown, which is this uh, photograph right here. And then this next shot is a is a photograph of downtown Portland. So that's Portland, Maine, uh, the largest city in the state of Maine, which by again New York standards is uh, is laughably small. But nevertheless, it does have uh, all those things that you might expect from uh, from a major city. We have um, shops, uh, theater, athletics, um, uh, musical uh, musical events. Uh, it is uh, it's a lovely small town. Uh, it's excuse me, I should say it's a lovely city with a small town feel. And here, just uh, just drawing a connection to um, to our location and uh, being having having access to a an airport, uh, Portland International Jet Port. We have flights uh, to and from Portland uh, across the uh, the eastern seaboard and out to Denver. And this is a, a slightly outdated um, view of where our students come from uh, across the country. So as you can see, our students come from uh, around the country and uh, for that matter, around the world. Again, a slightly outdated um, view of where students, um, the, the home state or the home uh, country of, of some of our students. Uh, this photograph is a shot at the Schiller Coastal Study Center, which is a phenomenal resource right in the coast of Maine. Um, and I should I should stress that we are in fact on the coast of Maine. So Brunswick is uh, not not only a, a cute as a button little town, but it is also right in the coast of Maine. So this phenomenal proximity um, means that our students uh, have have ample access 
to all that the coast has to offer. And the Schiller Coastal Study Center, which I just mentioned a couple of moments ago, is a resource that has recently been expanded. Um, it's a 15 minute drive from our core campus, if you will. And we have uh, research facilities, um, we have uh, a, a small set of dorms out there, a dining hall, et cetera. It is a space for students to use irrespective of their, their academic major. Uh, we also have, um, so in terms of the, the outdoors and the connection to outdoors, we also have a very um, uh, deep connection to, to all those things indoors. So in terms of lectures or concerts or music, uh, music or uh, visiting speakers, whatever it might be, we have a robust, um, a robust extracurricular experience for, for students. Uh, very quickly here, these are the list of uh, the other schools, uh, other colleges and universities in the New England Small College Athletic Conference arguably the most competitive in Division Three. We're a part of it. And this is a line from Joseph McKean, who's a mathematician, astronomer, minister, and the first president of Bowdoin. The college shouldn't only benefit the people who get an education here, but that Bowdoin was founded to benefit the common good. And I realize my time is limited, but I, I think this is a really nice piece to stress. Um, we have a deep connection to this notion of the common good, the idea that uh, we bring fiercely intelligent, thoughtful, kind, and creative individuals to, to Bowdoin who are, who are connected to the common good and who are looking, who are looking to continue and make a sustained impact in, in their community, whether that be their local community, international community, national community, whatever it is. We are looking for students who are going to make that sustained commitment to this notion of the common good. And um, just very quickly here, going through a couple of couple of images, um, we have a an eminently um, eminently uh, I should say. Let me step back. Uh, we have a very um, a, a a an academic program that is built upon the foundation of research and that intimate connection between professors and students. Uh, this idea that you are going to be working hand in hand with students, um, with other students, and 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 also faculty members throughout your time. At Bowdoin. And I realize Jeannie has popped on, so I'm running out of time here, but uh, I will very swiftly jump forward and say that uh, what we're looking for is we're looking for grades in the application process, we're looking for heart, uh, we are not looking for income, and we are not looking at test scores. And I'd be happy to explain a little bit more about those in the question and answer section. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bowdoin College. That was wonderful. I know it is very challenging to get all of this important information in only six minutes. So thank you so much to all of our panelists for making that happen. But now we want to take advantage of having this group of experts here. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to kick off this brief Q&A with an important question for all of you. And that is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We're gonna go in the same order. So we'll ask Clark University to kick us off again. Great, thank you. Um, I'm actually going to emphasize a point that I tried to mention in my presentation. I think a lot of us have mentioned it too, is just to keep in touch. Um, when I was applying to college, I felt like I was seeing like so many images of really beautiful campuses and it was always fall <laughs> or spring. Um, and that's definitely a helpful beginning for getting to know a college. But the minute you start to actually meet people at the college, whether it's any of us or our current students, um, it can help you get a sense of if it could be a place for you. Um, to that end, I realized I forgot to put in my contact information, so I'm putting that in um please do feel free to reach out along the way um i said it before but it's worth repeating um i will never ever be annoyed if you email i'm sure all of us will agree we love um getting to know students that's why we do this so uh, please do keep in touch with us absolutely okay st john's university what is your advice um so i think really thinking outside of the box um don't worry about where your friends say you should go or where mom or dad might say you should go or where you've heard is a good school because you're really looking for the school that's good for you and there's a good fit for everyone whether 
you know, your friends like that or not. Um, you have to go what you feel, go to what you feel is right. Um, and really thinking outside of the box. If you're in, you know, visiting a school that you maybe had on your list or maybe thought of and you pass a, a sign for a few other schools, just go take a drive and take a look at them if you're there anyway. Um, so really just kind of thinking outside of the box and exploring all options. Obviously now with COVID, this is a bit more difficult, but every school has tons of virtual options if you can't get to visit that school. So you can take advantage of those opportunities as well. Absolutely. Okay, Savannah College of Art and Design, your advice for us all? Um, real quick, I, I would say there's no such thing as a silly question. Uh, make sure that you know your questions are important to you that you need to have answered uh, before you make a decision. So make sure to ask them all. And and thankfully, especially on this panel, you know we've got some amazing institutions with amazing representatives that uh, it's our job, you know, to answer all your questions to the fullest extent to make sure that you have all the information possible. So, um, you know, I always say have a checklist of all those most important questions that need answering that are most important to you. Um, and when you're taking a tour, when you're talking to one of us, um, make sure that we're, we're checking all your boxes. So there you go. Great advice. School of Visual Arts, what is your advice? Um, I would say, especially when it comes to any schools looking into portfolios, that is also something to be in contact with us about. Um, if you decide you want to transfer to schools, that's also a very important thing um, that you want to get in touch with, especially when it comes to transfer credits and placement within a certain year. Um, so doing that research early on is definitely helpful, along with just getting some advice from uh, people who are here to help you with your portfolio. Um, Sometimes the people you're con in contact with are alumni of the school. Katie and I are actually alumni of SBA as well. So it gives you kind of an insight to know what it's like to apply to that school because we kind of went through that process exactly like you will. So again, keep in touch with us and make sure to ask those questions. Absolutely. All right, Juniata College, what would you like to add? Also, sorry for blowing up the chat right now. It was really small and I couldn't see, but um, I think a lot of us has touched on this, but I like to, I think, um, think of call, you're gonna, you're gonna live for most of us live there for four years, like a lot of the time, like most of the time. So it's gonna be your home, right? So a really big part of it, I know that sounds like really simple and stuff, but either when you're researching or you're talking to people, students, faculty, staff, when you visit, just trying to like, does this feel like home? Like, could I live here? Does it feel right? Not just this has the, it might have the best program, which is great as a, a piece of it, but especially if you're going to a four-year residential institution, does it feel like somewhere you could call home? And there are a lot of factors in that. And those factors are different for everybody. So um, I don't like to use the cliche, like uh, trust your gut, but you know, keep home in mind, so. That's what I would say. Absolutely, thank you. All right, Bowdoin College, this can be kind of a difficult one to uh, go last on, but I'm sure you've got something to add to what everyone said here. What would you like to add? Well, I, I certainly echo, echo what my colleagues have shared thus far. And, and I think Kat provided a really nice segue for the, the point that I wanted to share. And that is to say, um, when, as you're looking at colleges, as you're going through the college application process, the admissions process, keep in mind this notion of happiness. I, I think we all, it's, it's, uh, we, we too often don't, um, and, and when I say we, um, the we as in uh, college admissions officers, we collectively don't talk enough about this notion of happiness and what it means to be happy at your respective institution. Uh, and that's going to be different from place to place. So as a prospective student, think critically about what you're looking for from not only an academic perspective, because no doubt any of our institutions here are going to provide a really excellent academic experience, but also think about the other pieces of the puzzle, if you will, the other pieces of you being a human being. Think about extracurricular activities. Think about the social experience uh, and ask questions, ask critical questions uh, of not only admissions officers, but, but also current students if you, if you have the opportunity to do so. And I also I will add my, uh, my contact information in the chat window. Sorry about that. Perfect. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, that was great advice from all of you. We are going to take advantage of having y'all here and get one last opportunity to learn a little bit more about each of your campuses. So rapid fire, very quick responses. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Top of the order, get us started, Clark University. 
we'll say gala is uh, the most fun tradition. It's essentially a large international dance competition. Um, I would just recommend Googling Clark University Gala and you'll find some great videos. Awesome, I look forward to that. Okay, St. John's University, your favorite? Um, or something called Spring Fling, which happens at the end of each school year, kind of culminating the academic year. Um, and it's not only fun for our students, but also for you know us as employees, where we get to kind of walk around and see our students um, in action with their friends. It's basically like a big carnival right at the center of campus that happens right before finals each year. That sounds like a blast. Savannah College of Art and Design, your favorite? Uh, it would probably have to be a competition we call humans versus zombies. Uh, basically, students sign up to be one of a zombie or a human, and we actually let them loose in our academic buildings uh, at night, turn off all the power. So this way you're kind of hunting or trying to survive uh, in one night with, with a bunch of Nerf guns. It's a lot of fun. So. That sounds very interesting and intense. All right, School of Visual Arts, you're up. Um, I think one of our favorite events is our holiday bazaar. We host it right before the break, the winter break comes around. And it's a way for students to potentially sell their artwork and get an experience in selling art, especially since that's potentially what they're going to be doing when they graduate from school. So I think it's a really good event where they can showcase themselves to other students and even some staff and other people that may come in to check out what the students are making and even selling to them. I love that and so unique to your institution as well. Fantastic. Juniata College, what would you like to share? I'll make it real quick. It's called Mountain Day, random day in the fall. No one knows. Class is canceled, spur of the moment. Um, yes, it's, it, was in, it was inspired by smallpox too. So if that's not a clickbait, like click, cliffhanger, don't worry, like not in a bad way. Um, YouTube it, Google it, Mountain Day, Juniata. I love that you're giving, you're all giving us uh, homework to learn more about your campuses. That's great. All right, Bowdoin College, your favorite event or tradition on campus? Uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, there's uh, a space uh, 10 minutes from campus called the Shiller Coastal Study Center, and that's right in the, the Atlantic Ocean. It's phenomenally beautiful, and students in the fall go out there and go swimming, and um, go swimming at nighttime, I should say. And um, during a few weeks in, um, in late fall, that's when the bioluminescent algae are active and students, uh, when they go swimming, it is, it's really extraordinary. It's like, for those of you who've seen the movie Avatar, it kind of feels like you're in the middle of Avatar where you were swimming at night and you have these, these algae um, illuminating your way and you just, it feels like you're in, in one of the, the, the best movies imaginable. It's quite lovely. And it sounds like another really good thing for us all to Google as well. Okay, everyone. Well, I want to once again, thank all of our panelists for being here and sharing this incredible information about their campuses. I hope that our attendees learned a little bit more about these campuses and are excited to go do that Googling to learn more. I also want to thank all of our attendees who are here, whether you are here live or you're catching this recording, we hope that you learned a lot about these campuses. Please keep in mind that this session is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivecn.com forward slash Brooklyn Tech. I put that link in the chat for you all again one more time. And this is one of many sessions. So there's two more series happening immediately after this tonight, as well as two more days of this um, yet this week. So make sure you take a look for additional sessions to join. And last but not least, when you close your Zoom, uh, recording or your event today, you're going to get a very quick four question survey. So any information that you can provide about making this better would be most appreciated. All right, everyone, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you so much for being here. Bye-bye.